All right, guys. So next thing to cover is the counters. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure our inputs and our outputs. So I'm going to have three inputs. So I'm going to have a reset push button, an up push button, a down push button, and then I'm going to have one output. And I've been consistently using uh, my indicator light connecting into my output number six. Once you have those guys, so indicator light, and you've got your reset, up and down push buttons, then you can hit apply and then go over to program. And we're going to drop in a section here. And the counter is right here. So if we hover over it, it'll show us the counter. We're going to left click, which is going to drop in our counter. I've already labeled this as the up down counter for my counter zero. Again, your counters are percent C zero. And if we hover over this guy, it shows us all of our little bits that we can make use of. So R is the reset to zero. So that's your accumulated being reset back to zero. S is a preset value that you can input. CU is up count. CD is down count. E is an overrun if you're down counting. F is an overrun if you go too high in the up counting. And then D is the done bit. And the done bit will set when the preset equals the accumulate value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to count up first. So I'm going to, let's see, left click on here and bring a rung over here till I see green. I'm going to drop in an examine of close there because I'm going to use a normally open push button. And every time that I close that push button, it's going to send a signal into my count up. I have a normally closed contact that I'm going to use for my reset. So I'm going to see when it opens. Okay, so again, if you're using a normally open contact, then you would use an examine if closed. I'm using an, a normally closed contact, so I'm going to examine when that guy opens and changes state. Okay, from there, I need the done bit. So I'm going to grab this guy, bring it across to this rung. There we go. I'm not interested in this guy at that point. And I'm going to put in this as uh, percent input 0, 0 for the reset. This guy for my account up was percent input 0 0.1. There was my up input. And then my done bit, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but you can use internal bits. So think of this as an internal relay. And I'm going to address this as percent M0. Okay, so this here is just an internal memory bit. If I go to uh, define symbols, then you can see that I've defined it right here. The where I've done that is I've gone into configure and I've gone to configure the data. So it's not actually a piece of hardware. It's just a soft relay. And there are my memory bits. So there's memory bit zero. So I have all these different bits that I can use as internal relays. So if you just want to control something else later on the program, you can make use of these memory bits rather than actually wiring up a relay. Okay, we're going to go back to program. We're going to edit the program. Beautiful. And we're going to say that, let's drop a rung in, that when that memory bit sets, so when the done bit sets, it's going to turn on the memory bit. That's going to go from a zero to a one. We're going to monitor that memory bit. And when that memory bit goes to a one, then we want to turn on that output. And we physically have the output wired to Q0.6. And there's our indicator light. Excellent. So that's everything we need for an up counter. We're going to double check our program, make sure that we have no errors. If you don't have a PLC at this point, you can go to the simulator and you can toggle your up counter a number of times and then you can reset it here and you can make use of a, an examine of close if you wanted to up here. I, again, I have a normally closed switch with a, which I've usually used on the previous videos as a stop push button and I'm just going to see when it changes state. I have this preset as a value of five. If I want to change that, I'm going to double click. Uh, I've labeled this as my up down counter and my preset is five, uh, but I can change that to three if I wanted to. Okay, as soon as that's done, then it sets that value. I'm going to go back to program. Everything's cool. So now I'm going to go to debug. 
I'm going to use my serial connection there. I'm going to transfer from the PC to the controller. Hit OK a couple times. And I'll pause because this takes my computer some time. Okay, so we're now going to hit the run button. Again, we're waiting for a green light here. Ooh, that was fast. Very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to hit my up push button. So here's my up push button here. So you can see that go green. And every time that I hit that, I want you to notice the accumulated value goes up. So it went from a 0 to a 1. I let go of it. Now I have another input coming in because I'm going to press that push button. And it goes to a 2. And then once the preset equals the accumulated value, then this memory bit will set, which will turn this to a, a 1. And that will set off my indicator light. Okay, so we'll hit this input one more time and watch when these two values become the same beautiful and then the indicator light turns on nice okay so i can keep incrementing though right so i can keep going up and up and up so we'll have to do something later on to take care of that and limit the value to just three because i can keep incrementing it up to like as 9999 right so we'll have to put something in later on to deal with that issue. But for now, we're just looking at how this counter works. I now need to reset it. So I'm going to press that normally closed push button, which will stop the 24 volts going to the input. So, and you'll see that this value goes right to zero as soon as this is true. Beautiful. Okay. At that point, my indicator light turned off. Okay. So one more time, guys, we're going to increment. So one, two, three, done bit sets, indicator light turns on. And then if I need to reset it, I'm going to hit my reset push button and my accumulated value will go to zero. Right on. As soon as that happens, then my indicator light turns off because the memory bit is no longer set because the done bit is now a zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop in another input here. Let's see if we can do this while the PLC is actually running. So I'm going to grab this rung right here, bring it over till I see green, and I'll put an input there for my countdown. I'm going to select that rung right there, and again, drop in an examine if closed, because I'm going to use a, nor a normally open push button. And I'm going to label that guy uh, input 0.2. And that I've already labeled as my down input. Now, this red right here is telling me that the PLC has absolutely no idea what I'm doing right now. So what I need to do is I need to go up here, validate and transfer. So it's going to check that everything's cool and then transfer that back to the PLC. Okay, so it's just changing the program on the PLC now to match with the fact that I put that other input in there. Ah, uh, yes. Now we see the green, and now we're good to go. So we have now created an up-down counter. So a countdown counter literally just has an input here, and we would eliminate this guy here for the count up. Now on the Allen Bradley, you have to use, um, for an up-down counter, you have to use two counters and address them the same. The beauty of this this uh, Twitter suite is that both of them are in the same instruction here. You just have to provide it with a different input. Okay, so now again we can increment up. So I'm going to hit this, the input to increment up. There's one, there's two, there's three, and the light sets. Beautiful. I'm going to let go of that input, and that value stays in the counter. So that's interesting that. It keeps the count, even though the input has disappeared now. And now I can hit the reset, or I can hit this down input. So watch what happens when I hit the other push button. It's going to increment down. So I'm going to hit this, and this is going to go to a 2. Okay, there we go. So you can see that this is true, and this has now gone down by 1. I'm going to let go of that push button. I'll press it again, and it'll increment down again by 1. Then I'll let her go, and I'll increment down again, and I'm at zero. Beautiful. Watch what happens now if I hit that uh, down input one more time. 
all of a sudden it goes to 9,999. Okay, so uh, we can put some other things into the PLC to deal with that in case some noise comes on the line and gives us a number of inputs um, that we weren't expecting. Okay, we want to bring this back to zero. And there we go. So again, we can now increment up one, two, three. And we can go down anytime that the down input is there. So at this point, we've got a cool little program that mimics uh, a carport. So, I mean, say we, obviously the carport's going to have a lot of different uh, places to park the cars. But as we have people coming in and we've got a gate that opens up, we can keep count of the gates. If there's only three spots in the whole parking lot, then we'll have the first guy come in. Gate goes up, gate goes down, second guy comes in, gate goes up, gate goes down, third car comes in, takes up all the spaces, gate goes up, gate goes down, and as soon as that happens, then we've got a light that turned on to say that the lot is full. Okay, somebody leaves the lot, and as they leave, the opposite gate gets tripped, that input goes into the PLC. There's one spot available in the parking lot, so the lot full sign goes off. Somebody else comes in, and all of a sudden the lot is full again. So then we can keep track of all the people coming in and out of our parking lot. At the end of the day, we got nobody there, and we're ready for the next day. So now we've got something that can look at a number of inputs coming in. We could be a gate to see the cars coming in and a gate to see the cars coming out. Just put a limit on each of those guys. And then obviously when the count equals the number of parking spots that we have there, then we fire on that indicator light to show that the lot is full. Excellent. All right, guys. So that covers our up counter and our down counter. Um, we may look at these guys later on. The E and the F are simply just down counting overrun and up counting overrun. And we'll take a look at uh, the S later on for changing the preset. But for now, we got a pretty good understanding of the up counter and the down counter. And we've also made use of an internal memory bit that is like a soft relay. And we're just seeing when that bit turns on and using that to turn on or actually open. All right, guys. Thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.